Yes, 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 we have all heard about Raspberry touchscreens so much. But, in reality, are they any good? Well, today we are going to be determining that exact question while also reviewing this 10.1 inch WiMAX at touchscreen. So, let's dive straight into the video. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a service that will to create custom PCB prototypes, flexible PCBs, PCB assemblies, CNC, 3D printing, and much more. Let's say you were building a custom project with this touchscreen I have right here, and you need a specific PCB for it to work correctly. Well, all you need to do is go to PCBWay.com, become a member, get $5 for free, and order your first one to two layered standard PCB prototype with dimensions of within 100 to 100 millimeters, and with a quantity of 10, and you would get it completely for free. PCBWay also has an open source community that you can join where you can find custom projects that PCBWay users have created, even some with the Raspberry Pi. Basically, if you need anything from PCB prototypes to SMD stencils and to all of their other great services, PCBWay has you covered. So, yes, I was the screen by WiMAX and a huge thank you to them for doing so. But again, everything in this video is going to be my own personal thoughts and they have no say in my or anything I do. Okay, so I wanted to make this video a little bit more interesting. So I thought it'd be cool to be looking at this question. Are touchscreens worth it on their Raspberry Pi? Because, you know, you hear about it a lot. Oh, I bought this touchscreen for my Raspberry Pi, blah, blah, blah. But... Are they really good? Like, should you actually be spending your money on something like that? Well, we are going to be diving into that question in this video. But first of all, I do want to take a look at this WiMAX at 10.1 inch screen a little bit in depth, and then we'll go back to answering that exact question. First of all, though, let's take a look at this 10.1 inch screen, its specs, and what type of display it is. So, in the past, I've actually reviewed a 7 inch touchscreen by this same company, WiMAXit, and it was alright, just for my liking, it was a little bit small. But this 10.1 inch version is definitely better, as it's much larger and feels more usable. But first of all, the unboxing experience of this product was really nice. I mean, it's a pretty simple box, but you get everything in the box that you could need while using this screen and it seems to work fairly nice you know everything seems to pop out of that box fairly nice so I would say a good unboxing experience but as for the resolution of this display we have a thousand by 24 times 600 IPS panel sadly not 1080p but at the screen size it's not a deal breaker for me as the display still looks clear enough it's not a huge screen so it doesn't make a huge difference the screen actually has an 178 degree viewing angle so it's a pretty nice degree viewing angle for my liking we actually have diy speakers which you actually stick on here yourself as you see right here so it is interesting that they aren't actually pre-installed like i would prefer if they came intact but i guess for those of you who don't want speakers at all this allows you to not have to worry about trying to remove the speakers so for really diy people this could be a little bit better so, as for the I.O. on this screen, it's kind of like we have two sets, one for connecting to a PC and another set to connect to a mounted Raspberry Pi 4 slash 3. So as for the I.O. for the PC, we have a full size HDMI right here, an audio jack and a micro USB, which is for power and touch. Okay. What about the Raspberry Pi I.O.? Well, for the Raspberry Pi I.O., we have an HDMI port for display and a micro USB for touch and power, pretty much just like the PC I.O. The display comes with special small adapters, as you can see right here, which both come for the Pi 4 and Pi 3 in respected little Ziploc bags. They are labeled for Pi 4 and Pi 3. So, like on a Pi 4, you know, you have a micro HDMI. You don't have a full-size HDMI like the Pi 3. So these little adapters are made specifically for the Pi 3 and Pi 4 to work respectively on them. However, sadly, I was testing this display out with it without the Pi 4 screwed in. It was just kind of sitting on top of those screws right here. And I moved the Pi 4 around and I broke the USB to micro USB adapter. It kind of just came apart. So it must not have been the best of quality, but it could also have been my lack of carefulness. So that was definitely a bummer. 
And the small HDMI adapter that is made specifically for the Pi 4 doesn't seem to work with my Pi either, or at least with Raspberry Pi OS. So like, I can't get Raspberry Pi OS to show up. I just get this like no signal thing. But when I use the longer HDMI cable into the PCI, uh, PCIO part, it works without a doubt. So I really don't know why it's not working. That is definitely a bummer since have, using this long cable makes it a lot less tidy. But does it still work? Sure, and you can always hide the cable behind the back of the monitor and it's not the end of the world. So I would say it's still fairly good. Okay. And you actually have to add the special lines into the config.txt of this display in Raspberry Pi OS to get it working correctly. Okay, and the speakers actually aren't really working for me either in a Raspberry Pi OS. I'm not sure why they're not working. But again, that, that, yeah, I wish they were working, especially for this price. I don't know if it's something I'm doing, but sadly, I can't get them working at least in Raspberry Pi OS. Okay, so we've got all of the specs out of the way, but what about pricing? Well, on Amazon right now, this monitor or this touchscreen is set for $119.99. And this is US Amazon, by the way, so this is US dollars. But that is quite a hefty price for this screen. It, by no means is this a cheap screen, but I mean, if, if you really need a specific size like this, you know, the bezels aren't super large. They are definitely visible and a little bit large, but if you need kind of some screen for some industrial usage or some little custom project, you may want to shell out that money for this screen because it does seem to do many things right. But if, again, I do wish those Pi 4 adapters worked a little bit better for me. Okay, so we've seen what the WiMAX screen can do, and it is pretty cool. But now, are touchscreens even worth it on the Pi 4? Are they any good? Well, honestly, it really depends on your use case like everything. I know this is a super classic answer, but it really does depend on your own use case. However, I would say with Raspberry Pi OS, it's not the best experience. Like, like using a keyboard and mouse is definitely better but by no means is it terrible. Typing is a little bit hard, of course, but you can always install a third-party touch keyboard, such as Matchbox right here with the command sudo apt install Matchbox, but it does get the job done. So here's me trying to type something into the web browser. You can see the keyboard fills out, fills the entire screen, and I don't know, the key, I can't get the keyboard to go away either, so the keyboard's kind of like always on my screen, but it does work on typing, and it is quite responsive as well, so that is awesome. So you see here, I can also try to search for a video in the browser, and you can see that it's not an optimal experience, but of course, it's nowhere ne near being terrible. Other Linux distros are going to be a lot similar to Raspberry Pi OS. They're just, they're going to be usable, but not the best. Like, I would love to see something like Ubuntu Touch running on the Raspberry Pi 4. I know there was some project to get it running on the Pi 3, but give, getting on the Pi 4 and then using a touchscreen for this, creating some custom Raspberry Pi 4 Linux tablet, that would be a pretty cool thing to try out. So, I don't know if it's available for the Pi 4, but if it is, let me know in the comments below. However, Okay, so we've got the idea that touchscreens aren't the best for desktop usage, or at least Linux desktop on, on the Raspberry Pi 4, but they do work. Okay, however, in my opinion though, touchscreens and the Raspberry Pi really shine when you're looking to create some type of home or dashboard. Something to show your CPU temps, monitor your smart home, some custom project like that. Touchscreens are just incredible for that. They sit on the side of your desk and they just do the job well. And whenever you need touch, you don't have to get out a mouse and keyboard. You can just use your finger and expand through your dashboard. That's where I think touchscreens do something really well. That is where they are the best. For example, here I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to install Casa OS, a home server operating system, onto my screen and have a nice little dashboard to manage my Docker container. So here is what it's gonna look like. 
All right, y'all, so here is kind of what I had as an idea. So here I have CAS OS installed on my Raspberry Pi 4, and I've actually, it's opened up in Chrome in a full screen tab like this. So here you could set your, this monitor somewhere, like on a desk or something, and have this full screen monitor open where you can always just glance over, see how your home server is doing. Like right here, you can see your CPU usage, your RAM usage, your storage. You could open up this terminal right here and SSA straight into the Raspberry Pi. Well, you wouldn't need to do that. You're already on the Raspberry Pi. But you know, this could, you could have this to kind of configure your home server whenever you need it to be, or you could even use this to run some specific applications. Like here, I, I've actually installed Home Assistant and Jellyfin from the App Store right here. So you could use this as a way to control your home server, install applications, remove applications, or you could even open up Jellyfin and have it open up in full screen too and use this as even a full on movie watching method. Like there is definitely a lot you could try right here, but it's really up to you what to try. But you know, this is open up in Chromium right here. I click this and I go full screen and that's how I kind of get that full screen interface type of thing. So if you're interested, this is a possible use case for your Raspberry Pi 4 and a touchscreen just like this. Okay, so to conclude my thoughts on everything, I would say touchscreens are great for the Raspberry Pi 4 with custom projects you may be interested in building. However, when it comes to desktop usage, I don't think they really shine. Ask for this exact WiMAX at 10.1 inch screen, would I recommend it? Okay, so it's a little bit hard to say. Well, I would say if you're looking for a screen that you're gonna use for some type of home dashboard and it doesn't need to be incredibly tidy, you can hide like the HDMI cable behind the back or maybe even the Pi 4 adapters will work for you. If you don't care about speakers so much and if you're more focusing on the exact screen itself, I would say this is a good screen for that. If you're gonna be like, especially if you're gonna be running Raspberry Pi OS, you're just gonna have this sitting on your desk, I could recommend this screen. But if you're looking to build some type of portable tablet as I said I didn't have the best experience with the speakers personally and that adapter broke but again for you for you guys the adapters might not break it might have just been my own self so I would definitely recommend this screen more to users who are trying to create some type of DIY home dashboard but again i won't tell you not to buy it for a tablet maybe you can get something working better than i did or maybe i'm just doing something wrong but overall this screen for the price and for what it does i'd say it's it's a good screen if you really do need its specifics. So yeah, I could recommend this screen to some people. Let me know in the comments below, would you purchase a touchscreen for your Raspberry Pi 4 or would you just go ahead and buy a full size monitor? Let me know. Alrighty, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed a like, if you really enjoyed a sub would be appreciated. Thank you.